Hello, lacrosse friends. Welcome to Oswegan, Ontario, the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena, where the Oswegan Demons will be playing host to the Durham Turf Dogs in exciting Canadian Lacrosse League action in a game with all kinds of playoff seating significance. I am your host tonight, Stephen Stamp. I'll be taking you through the game for JVI Web uh, News Sports Network. JVI Sports Network. Easy to say. Um, it was, should be an exciting game this week. Last week, these teams played in Oshawa, and uh, Durham took the game late on a goal, game and a goal by Mac O'Brien, who'd just been activated for the game. Oswegan was short a couple of runners. They had a flu bug running through the team, and it really affected them. This week, we're going to see Durham a little shorthanded. Jesse Guerin, the leading scorer, is out. They do not have their starting goaltender, Kevin Croswell, and they do not have their top faceoff man, Mike Cudmore. Who they do have going today is Dylan Goddard. They will need him to really step things up. He's played very well for them this season. They're going to look for maybe some more scoring from him tonight. As you can see, he's getting four points a game, doing very well. But with Jesse Guerin not here, he's going to have to take on a real leadership role on the offensive side of the floor. He works hard all over the floor. On the other side of the carpet this night, Roger Weiss, a veteran, veteran player, leading their team in scoring with 20 points in four games. A uh, guy who has played plenty in the National Lacrosse League and Major Series Lacrosse and he has been just a great leader of this team. Had a terrific game last week for them and has been really good whenever he's been on the floor with the Sealax Demons. We're going to take a peek now at our starting goaltenders. As we mentioned, no Kevin Croswell. That means Cole Murray is in. He has had some pretty good appearances. His first game of the season, he gave up just four goals in a big Durham win over the defending champion Niagara Lock Monsters. And the next week, he had a terrible first quarter and got pulled. So that's the way it can go with goalies. They're hoping he's on his game tonight. Jake Henhawk has been on his game pretty consistently for this week in Demons as uh, he is a great record. Played very well for the team. Uh, a very uh, economical goalie in terms of his movements. Not a real acrobatic guy. The uh, standings we mentioned are very close this season in the Canadian Lacrosse League. You can see Durham and Oswegan tied with three wins and three losses apiece. Um, if Durham wins this, they obviously get the tiebreaker edge over Oswegan. If Oswegan wins, because Durham won by just one goal last week, if Oswegan can take this by more than one goal, that gives them the tiebreaker edge on Durham. They'll both have another game next week, and those games will be critical as uh, Durham and Oswegan both play. They'll be, um, and Barry has another couple of games, and Southwest has a game, and all those will play a factor in who will be playing host to the semifinals of the Canadian Lacrosse League this year. And uh, obviously, you want to play, if you can, in your home barn. We're just going to uh, take it down to the floor for some uh, music before the game.
Okay, we are just about ready to start. Let us know as the game progresses who you should think should who you think should be the three stars. Tweet us at JBI Video is our handle. We will certainly take into consideration your suggestions. Love to hear from you as the game develops and we see who uh, who is playing the biggest role. One big question off the top for the Durham Curve Dogs: Who will take the faceoffs in the absence? of Mike Cudmore, as you can see there. Alternate captain Josh Wasson has made his way out. He's through a lot of facing off for the Peterborough Lakers in major series lacrosse. Hasn't done a lot of face offs the last couple of years. Um, some in senior B, but not a ton. So we'll see how he fares against Mike Atwood, who traditionally in this league has been one of the very best at earning position for his team off the draw. Mike Hatwood, one of the guys who was out last week with the flu. His brother Chris also missed last week's game. Tried to make it there and just couldn't play. I understand he is still feeling a bit weak, but we'll see how he does tonight. Atwood pulls the ball out to himself. Can't come up with it. And it's going to be a push, though, a loose ball push against Durham. This weekend starts with the ball. Travis Hill immediately with the hidden ball trick. It's going to be Tory Van Every spinning, getting the first shot off. Almost gets through Cole Murray, but he gets enough of it. Loose ball is scooped up. Here come the turf dogs back the other way. Cody Adamson streaking through the club. He gets a push in the back. Penalty coming to Tory Van Every. Durham's Cole Murray heads to the box. We'll get an extra attacker on the floor. They've got 13 to shoot, and the extra attacker just coming now. John St. John from the outside gives it off to Goddard. Grasby tries the hard pass across to McNulty. They eventually get a shot off just before the buzzer goes, but it goes wide. Van Every will head to the box. Durham, less than a minute into the game, heading to the power play, and Dylan Goddard will start with the ball up top. Goddard, as you saw in the opening, third on the Turf Dogs with 21 points in five games. He's got seven goals and 14 assists, and he is a guy who plays very well for them both ways. Really works hard out on the floor. and Such a talented sniper in Junior B. Of course, Jeff McNulty leading the team with 11 goals. He is down on the crease. John St. John with Gearn out, getting some power play time. And Tim Bergen in his righty shooter spot takes that first shot. It's stopped by Henhawk, but it's tracked down by Wasson. Those two will flip positions. Durham moving it around the outside for the time being. Elijah Printup up at the top along with Kyle Jamison. They are one of the better pairs of penalty killers at the top of a formation. There's a shot from the outside by Goddard. The bouncer goes well wide. It's gonna come back over center and into the Durham bench. It'll be a sweep in possession. Wayne Van Every has the ball. Tommy Montour has returned from a couple of game suspension to get back into the lineup. Looking to make his mark tonight. Can't quite connect though with the cutter. That was Chris Atwood looking for the pass. He's got the ball now. Goddard out checking him. That's one where you might think it'd be a mismatch with, mismatch with the highly talented and elusive Chris Atwood being covered by the primarily an offensive player, Dylan Goddard. But Goddard keeping good positioning. Durham gets the ball back. Aaron Brown gives it off to Bergen. They set back up on the power play. Up top to Goddard as Wasson trots out. Starting to get some movement inside as they pass the ball around the outside. And then they go low and the shot saved by Henhawk off of Wasson. Jamison lofts one ahead too far for Montour. He's racing for it with Bergen. Bergen takes a nice angle, gets good position. Montour working hard to try and get it. Bergen, great positioning, allowing Mac O'Brien to get the ball. O'Brien, two years ago, the transition player of the league in Sealax. Last week, the transition player of the week after his six point effort in his first game of the season, including a brilliant steal to race down and score the game winning goal in the final minute and a half against these Oswegian Demons. And a big comeback win for Durham that clinched them a playoff position. Penalty has expired, Tory Van Ever is out there. He's covering Goddard right now. They go to the net, the shot turned aside. Sweekin taking the time coming up. Kyle Jamison. That was Nevin Sullivan getting that shot off. Marty Hill 
back with the club after being released. Oh, and a goal, Roger Weiss. What a shot from the outside. He is known as Rocket Roger for a reason, and he snipes one from up high. Just after the penalty had expired, the next shift, Oswekin takes control with a one nothing lead on this Roger Weiss Rocket. There's Marty Hill just saying he's released from the Rochester Nighthawks. On their practice roster, comes and plays in this weekend and sets up the opening goal from Roger Weiss. This time it was Nick Grasby lining up against Mike Atwood. Atwood pulled it out, but a couple of turf dogs get there to battle for it. It's going to pop out to Marty Hill. He'll quickly move it over to Dewey Porter. Porter across to the far side, gets it back, shot goes wide. Picked up immediately by Scott Gamble. He passes off to Hogarth. Thomas Hogarth sprinting up the floor. He's got Dewey Porter on him. He's going to backtrack and give it off to Bergen and stay up in the offensive zone. There's Adamson going hard to the net. Loses his balance and falls. Wayne Van Every. Looking to try and get it through. Nobody was there. He couldn't get the pass through to Atwood, so he takes a shot. That's turned aside by Cole Murray, but battling hard for it is Wayne Van Every. He gets it back as he rolls it smartly out to the captain, Travis Hill. Mike Miller plays catch with Van Every. There's a shot from outside by Atwood. That's going to miss everything. Tricky little twister by Wayne Van Every, but Cole Murray gets enough of it. Fresh 30, though, for the Demons. Travis Hill goes to the far side. Atwood tries to get it back to him. Does shoot. Saved by Murray right into the stick. Rolls out to Hogarth. He's going to start going forward. Now he's going to run with the ball. Travis Hill on him. Tries the wrap check. Hogarth makes it across the center line. Brandon Armstrong over to Wasson. John St. John's shot doesn't get through traffic. It's going to be picked up by Kyle Jameson. He goes to the far side. Oh, just popping out of the stick of Rod Squire. Squire looked like he was in a pretty good spot to get a chance on net, but just couldn't handle the pass. May have looked towards the shot just before he had the ball secured. Tommy Montour watches Grasby, who throws it to the far side. Goddard, nifty little move to just cross his stick over for the catch. Gets it back and bounces one again wide. Goddard not quite finding his range on the shot yet. That pass is picked off by Tommy Monter. A little spin move to get away from Joe Wasson. Makes the pass off to Torrey Van Every, and Torrey will run it up the floor. Torrey leading the Demons in goals with 15. Six more than Wayne Van Every, who's in second place. That one gets away, but they do get it back and a fresh 30. Torrey Van Every. Over to Kenny Aaron. Stu Hill's underhand shot knocked aside. Another fresh 30 for the Demons as Chris Atwood gets it. Somehow gets it through a couple of sticks over to Roger Weiss. Here comes Aaron. He's turned aside by Murray. Murray being tested early and often here as this weekend really controlling a lot of the play in the early going. Atwood's just going to let it rip and score. He'll point to the heavens after ripping one into the top corner. And he gets a shove from Pete Rennie. But that will not deter him celebrating and he'll head back to the Oswegan bench having given them a two to nothing lead. Just takes a simple hard step here. Gets a little pick and that's all he needed. You could see he was waiting for it with Blue Hill coming over to set up a bit of space for him. And Atwood rips it home. He doesn't need a lot of space. Atwood pulls that one out. Can't pick it up himself, but does knock it over to his teammate. And Dewey Porter has control of the ball. Marty Hill takes the pass. Mike Miller will throw it down into the corner. Oh, they try and hit the cutting Atwood. Can't get it, but Tom Montour picks it up. 10 seconds to shoot. He drives to the net, gets one off the leg of Murray. Josh Wasson gets it, Montour's right on top of him. Grasby with a long pass just off the stick of St. John. He struggles to pick it up a bit. He's gonna go for the trailer, and it's in. 
Nice pass by St. John, looking at Cody Adamson until the trailer, Brandon Armstrong, was in position, then making the pass like a quarterback looking off the linebacker and cornerback, linebacker and safety with his eyes. St. John held the attention of the defender and the goalie until he could make the pass to the trailer and gets it perfectly to Armstrong who just stays out of the crease long enough to make it two to one. Next stoppage will be the official's timeout. So the coaches will get a chance to have a chat with their teams about what's going on so far. This weekend comes up with the ball again off the faceoff. Mike Atwood heads to the bench. Wayne Van Every, the two on two. He's just gonna shoot it as Josh Becker was rolling off a pick. Van Every used the uh, distraction to get a shot off, but that one goes off the post. Vice on his offside. Had Murray going the wrong way, but Murray makes the save. Gamble on print up. He almost throws it away, but it's picked up off the boards by Van Every. Vice tries to hit the cutter, that's picked off. Gamble looking for help. And we're gonna have a too many men call. And Matt Giles is apoplectic on the Durham bench as he feels his entire team was over in the change area by the time the players headed off the bench. John St. John will go and serve it. We'll see. There's Gamble heading up the floor. Can't really see, can't get a view of the whole bench, but you can see a couple of Durham players. Matt, Atwe or Matt Giles yelling at the officials, but as you watch the replay, he may want to also have a word for his players who, who didn't sprint to the bench to sp help spring their extra, their uh, transition player. Pete Rennie's having a chat with head official John Watson. <clears throat> now that would have a word with his players. Or Matt Giles, sorry, having <laughs> a word with his players. He and Matt Atwood, the other Matt coaching in the league, are actually co-coaches of the team that will represent the Canadian Lacrosse League, the Sealax Junior Program at the World International Lacrosse Festival for U19 teams here at the ILA before the World Indoor Lacrosse Championships this fall. There's Mouse Henry, the head coach of the Demons. Led the uh, Iroquois Ironmen to a Creators Cup Championship a couple of years ago. He's a very well experienced and well, uh, well rounded lacrosse coach. Roger Weiss will start with the ball up at the top. Rennie and Mac O'Brien at the top for Durham. Hogarth and I'm guessing it's gonna be Aaron Brown down at the other side, it usually is, although. It's actually looking like Brandon Armstrong, but we'll check that when he turns around, we can actually see the number on his back. It is Armstrong. This week and moving the ball around the outside up top to Vice. This week and very patient so far, 12 seconds to shoot and Vice rips one. Murray gets his arm on it. The ball's gonna come back to the Demons. Mac O'Brien was heading down the floor and Chris Atwood, the guy going back to cover him. It's four on three until those two get back in. Now Atwood's up top waiting for the ball, gets it. Fires sub shot. Murray drops onto that one. Brandon Armstrong is watched by Wayne Van Every. Runs into traffic. Chris Atwood trying to poke check him. Here comes Aaron Brown shooting, turned aside by the foot of Jake Henhock. Brown will hustle back as Durham, as this weekend sets up on the offensive end. Wayne Van Every waiting for his cohort. Torrey Van Every down low. Vice trots back up to the top and will get the ball. No, it goes to Wayne now over to, to Vice. Blue Hill. Goes to Chris Atwood, they're getting it moved and all around. That one goes off a defender. Almost picked up a demon, it bounces away and goes to Cole Murray. Shot clock expires, but he already had the ball. Now they get the ball to the cutter off the bench. Mac O'Brien driving to the net. Roger Weiss turns him aside. Thought about passing it to, to Cody Adamson. Instead, he's just gonna tuck it in. 
Try and keep away from Bison Van Every. They give him a shove. He's working to get it back. Vice had a bit of a tug on the jersey of O'Brien as he went into the corner. No call. And Oswegan will come up with it, but only 10 seconds left on the power play. Van Every setting things up. Elijah Printup just coming off the bench as the fifth attacker for Oswegan. And here comes John St. John out of the box. He's waiting for a breakout pass, but the shot didn't come from Oswegan, so they're fighting for it in the corners. 10 seconds on the shot clock. It's eventually picked up by O'Brien. He throws it down to St. John, print up on him. St. John holding on to it, fakes behind the back, trying to drive to the net. And that's where John St. John has really added to his game, is bulking up, adding some strength. You can see how he fought his way to the net there, was able to get the shot off. It was turned aside by Henhawk. Still two to one, just over four minutes left here in the first quarter. Certainly the flow of the game more even now as we can really controlling things largely in the first four or five minutes. We've got a delayed penalty coming to the Demons. So Durham gets the extra attacker out. And if they don't score with that, they will have a chance on the man advantage. Hogarth comes out as the sixth attacker. Wasson, Bergen, and Grasby all out there, four righties. And McNulty, the lefty, takes the shot. Gets away momentarily from Henhawk, but he will track it down, drop his mesh on it. Play is whistled dead, and Durham will go to the man advantage. Van Every, Wayne Van Every, taking two minutes for high sticking with 3.43 to go here. So Durham will look to try and even things up. McNulty to St. John, back up to Goddard. Wasson and Bergen, the same, same usual suspects for Durham on the power play. St. John down to Goddard. He's rolling out, passes to Wasson. Tries to hit the cutter, but St. John's stick gets knocked away from him. Here we go, two on two. Print up with the pass across. Jamison loses it off his stick. It's actually Rod Squire that was breaking out. And here we have a penalty coming. John St. John got wrapped up in Chris Atwood. Tried to let go, but was just too bound around his shoulder. And we have a holding penalty coming to John St. John. That'll make it four on four once play is drawn down. And it will be blown in now as Cole Murray picks up that loose ball. And this will be four minutes for him in the box as he had to serve their illegal substitution call. Here it is. You can see he gets wrapped and he's just tied up on the shoulder. Tries to let go here. It's just a bit too late as he impeded out with progress. We're four on four for the next minute ten, unless there are more penalties. Atwood's got the ball up top or will get it when play is ready to resume. Goes over to Travis Hill. We've also got Tory Van Every and Roger Weiss on the floor. Hogarth Gamble, Armstrong, there's a shot swooped up by Murray. Aaron Brown, the fourth turf dog out there. Big collision. Van Every's whacked into the boards. Hogarth is knocked down by Travis Hill. Hill pulls it out from under Hogarth, somehow gets it to Weiss. He can't control the ball as he has run to the ground. Nice effort there by Brandon Armstrong. Now Armstrong going after Vice again. Terrific effort shift. We've got words between Gamble and Chris Atwood, and it looks like they're both going to go to the box. Or is it just Atwood? Let's see if we catch what happens here. Here's the big hit by Gamble onto the shoulder of Van Every. And then he sits on Van Every, who kind of pulls Armstrong down. There's a big one hand whack by Vice on Hogarth. So it is Gamble and Atwood both going. It's cross checking for Gamble. And Atwood with the high stick. So we are three on three. Another penalty at this point would result in a penalty shot. 
in favor of the team that was offended against. So you gotta be a little careful here. Tori Van Every takes a behind the back shot. Turn this side by Murray. Van Every loves that shot going way high with it. Doesn't kind of tuck it behind the ear like a lot of guys do. He'll go right up over the head. Gets a lot of downward trajectory. Can make it pretty tricky for a goaltender to track. Now one of Sweeping player comes out. And it's four on three for the next 37 seconds. There's a shot from the outside. Murray grabs that one off the stick of Travis Hill. Lobs the pass up nicely to lead McNulty, but he just kind of lets it run away from him. And now Elijah Printup is going to come up with the ball. McNulty seemed to not necessarily see that ball exactly perfectly as uh, it just bounced away from him towards the boards. And the Sweden gets possession. 12 seconds left in the four on three. Here's Montour, the trailer. Hard pass. Oh, what a save! by Cole Murray coming across, stopping Wayne Van Every. Van Every can't take this pass. There now is a shot from the outside by Dewey Porter. Murray scoops that one up. He's got a man down the floor. It's John St. John. Oh, stopped by the stick of Jake Henhock. St. John very deliberate as he sets up on breakaways. Just couldn't find the back of the net. Now he's gonna try and track down Blue Hill. St. John hustling all over the floor. Now he'll get a chance to Catch his breath a little as they sit up in the D. Four on four shot, turned aside by Murray. Oswekin with the ball again in the 20, final 20 seconds of the quarter. Tommy Montour is gonna let it fly, saved by Murray. Hill gets the rebound. Hogarth out on him, makes the high pass, picked up by Aaron. Bounces away from Montour, eight seconds to go. Scrambled ball, whipped over the shoulder by John St. John, pretty smart play there, just get the ball out of harm's way and let the first quarter expire. It's two to one for the Asweekin Demons. We will take a quick break and be back with more JVI Sports Network Canadian Lacrosse League action. College has identified the gap between education and the stressors of the working world. We develop customized programs for each student at an affordable cost. Students can choose from over 30 diploma and certificate programs offered at any of Academy of Learning College's 17 Ontario-based locations. Simply a better way to learn. Learn more at academyoflearning.com. Fire Monitoring of Canada is the leader in the fire alarm monitoring industry specializing in the early notification of fire alarm signals to the fire department. Our experienced customer service staff will work closely with you to develop the best solution for your specific monitoring needs and our CFAA certified technicians are qualified to perform your installation quickly and efficiently. Be sure to choose Fire Monitoring of Canada because saving time saves lives. Visit us at fire-monitoring.com. All right, lacrosse friends, welcome back to the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. I am Stephen Stamp bringing you this JVI Sports Network production of Canadian Lacrosse League action. Josh Wasson lining up in the faceoff circle once again against Mike Atwood, who, at, who pulls it out to himself, has it in the back of the stick. He's going to take a shot. 
He can shoot pretty accurately with the ball in the back of the stick. Not that time though, as St. John gets the rebound. Runs away from Kenny Aaron's wrap check, gets a shot on net. Jake Henhawk calmly swoop, scoops that one up, tosses it up to Josh Becker. Becker, a rookie in this league, still adjusting. First of all, to playing defense, which he's not uh, particularly used to in the Can-Am League. He's known as more of an offensive guy. Dynamic athlete, though. Gets it over to Chris Atwood, that pass from Marty Hill. Atwood shoots, scores! What a pick of the corner by Chris Atwood with the finger wave. Such a beautiful shot, sidestepping, firing across the body, across the grain. Talked before the game about how Chris Atwood still suffering a bit from the flu, not feeling his strongest. You'll see another pick here, this one from Elijah Printup, and he's gonna go, oh, what a great angle. You see that one just past the arm of Cole Murray, just inside the post, just past the stick and head of Thomas Hogarth, and Chris Atwood does what he does so well, snipes it. Three to one for the Oswegan Demons. They're coming back down the floor. Tory Van Every will give it up to Chris Atwood. Atwood goes right up to the top to Van Every. There's Dewey Porter getting a pick and taking a shot. That's off the arm of Murray. It's picked up by Aaron Brown, Tom Montour on him, and Travis Hills back there, but he's got Goddard, gets it to him, Goddard alone, save Jake Hendhock, turning aside one of the most dangerous shooters in the league, and Dylan Goddard. That ball pops loose, not caring for it, or the Demons, and they almost pay for it, but Pete Rennie's shot goes wide. One referee has blown down that the ball went up into the mesh. It fairly clearly did not. So John Watts and the crew chief blows it down and we'll have a chat. And I think this one's gonna be reversed. Just judging by the angle at which it came down, I don't see how it could have hit the mesh. So it's gonna be Durham possession. Good job by Watson to clarify the mistake. Durham trails three to one as John St. John throws it into the corner to McNulty. Gets it across to Bergen who gives it straight back to him. Turf Dogs not being able to generate a lot of inside chances so far. This weekend really does pride themselves on starting with a defense first philosophy. 10 seconds to shoot. St. John spins past Monter. He's got a look. He is hit hard after by Mike Atwood. Long pass to Chris Atwood. Rennie got in the way a little bit with his stick. Probably just enough to make it tough. He trips and Atwood's right on him. Rennie does a nice job to scoop it up. Bit of a stumble, but a nice athletic play by Randy to get back up before Atwood could really pressure him. And he moves the ball up the floor. Behind the back pass, what a shot. O'Brien takes the pass from St. John, but Jake Henhawk is equal to the task. Big body check there by John St. John, who's having a very strong game tonight. Tommy Montour behind the back, that one bounces back out. Shul can't handle it, and Travis Hill will get the ball in traffic. Nice job by Hill. He's gonna roll off his man. Get it to Vice. He just puts the shoulder down into Shul and flattens him. Roger Vice is a load when he gets moving. Marty Hill over to the far side, bounces away from Wayne Van Every. He just picks his man, Joe Wasson. There's a shot off the side of the net, just off the back mesh. So no shot on goal. Scott Gamble does a nice job just protecting the ball for Marty Hill. Shot clock expires, Durham possession. They trail three to one. Three minutes and 10 seconds here into the second quarter of this Sealax game. Again, playoff positioning very much on the line in this contest. Mentioned that last week, Durham beat a Sweeken, a depleted a Sweeken lineup who was battling the flu. This week, it's Durham with some troubles getting everybody here as they've got a couple of guys hurt. Jesse Gearing out of the lineup, Kevin Croswell not available tonight, and Mike Cudmore, their faceoff guy out. So they were trying to overcome that. They're trailing three to one right now, but starting to get some chances. Goddard off the post. Durham really getting better looks now. They just can't finish. St. John, Goddard both had breakaways late in the first quarter. St. John had an open look. He was turned aside. Goddard now off the post. 
They're going to get some new fresh legs out there. Nevin Sullivan comes on. Now McNulty, the last man out, but this pass, pass for him is knocked down. Kenny Aaron's going to try and take it to the house. Now he spins back out and passes it to Vice. This weekend in the middle of a change, they'll slow it down. Get it over to Elijah Printup. Printup shoots. Looks like he went off the stick of Hogarth. Changed up a bit and fooled Murray, but went wide. Sub shot, hard one. Out off the backboards. Wayne Van Emery bounces the ball ahead to Roger Weiss, but the shot clock expires. Van Weiss is going to stay in check. Nevin Sullivan. Jeff McNulty sees that he does have that uh, pressure on him, so he stays back to be the outlet. <clears throat> McNulty with that flashy green head on his stick. Bouncing it over to St. John coming off the bench. They hit the cutter again, and there's a goal. They finally find home. It's Mac O'Brien cutting down the slot, takes a beautiful feed, and tucks it past Jake Henhawk to make it 3-2. to two. Durham well deserving of a goal at this point as they have had five excellent looks in the last several minutes of the game. We're going to see some of the excitement from the last few minutes. Here's the save as you see. One man, and one man right on the net, and here's the big hit along the board thrown by John St. John. And now we're gonna see the goal happening as the faceoff just being taken. There's a beautiful pass, a little twister with the hands by O'Brien. Such a good finisher in tight. Buries that one. It's three to two, just over five minutes gone here in the second quarter. Durham coming back up the floor. Nick Grasby looking for a trailer. He's going to flip it behind his back to Wasson. There's a shot by Gamble in tight on his offside. Just kind of went low. Stopped by Henhawk, who very casually tosses it forward. Jake Henhawk, so economical with his movements, never looks flustered, never looks like he's particularly perturbed. That great goalie attitude. Vice spins off a check. Hard pass across. Little backhand sub shot by Wayne Van Every. Cole Murray's right there for it though, and Josh Wasson passes it forward, and the Durf Dogs come up the floor with Cody Adamson. <clears throat> Goddard takes a return pass. Somebody got a stick on it. Kenny Aaron, I think. He flips it behind the back, and here come the Demons the other way. Wayne Van Every chugging down the floor, a bit behind Josh Becker. He can't handle it, but will luck pick up the loose ball. Tom Montour looking for the pass, but Wayne Van Every flattened. Nevin Sullivan, that's going to be a moving pick. Montour gets his stick on the pass, and then hustling over was Kyle Jamison. Nevin Sullivan knocked the stick out of his hands, but it does eventually go to the Demons. The intensity picking up, the competitiveness growing as this game progresses. There's a pass to the middle. It's going to go be tipped off Josh Wasson's stick and go straight to Cole Murray, who gets it to St. John. St. John probably the most dynamic turf dog to this point. Hard pass across, just brought in by Joe Wasson. Gets him to McNulty. He's going to go down low. Goddard rolling back up top. That's Mac O'Brien, actually. Nick Grasby going past Montour, shovel pass. McNulty on his offside, shoots, that one goes wide. Into the crowd, Osweek in possession. Jake Henhawk makes the easy pass to Josh Becker. Four demons in their own end. Two of them will head to the bench, two will come up to play offense, including Chris Atwood with the ball who goes over to the far side. Couple of spins. Roger Weiss puts his shoulder into another player. This time it's Brandon Armstrong, the shot by Weiss stopped. Atwood tried to just roll the ball into the corner just of the net, just missed and went into the corner of the rink. There's Joe Wasson working over Travis Hill. Hill gives it back up top and Rod Squire will go over to Marty Hill. He's looking to get the pass back to Squire. It's knocked away by Grasby, he's got a man ahead. Just caught there, here comes Aaron Brown. Can he finally convert on a breakaway? Yes! Aaron Brown 
who has really been snake bit on the breakaways this year, most of last year, buries that one beautifully into the top corner, 3-3 on the perfectly executed breakout play by the Durham Turf Dogs. We are gonna take the officials time out with 6.55 to go here in the second quarter. There's Jake Henhock heading to the bench. He was just beaten for the tying goal. He and Cole Murray, part of the goalie union, will share a little goalie love. And here is the breakout, beautiful pass. Just getting it to Aaron Brown. Look, sees he's got plenty of time, another peak. Now he focuses on the target, plants that foot, and goes cross body a little bit, back against the green, just inside the post, past Jake Henhock. There's head coach Mouse Henry, and leaning against the pillar, assistant coach Roger Chrysler. Standing back a little bit, he plays a big role with this team as well. Here we see another look. We're gonna get a bit better look at the pass originally as it is scooped up here by Grasby. Nice hustle to get to the ball first and great awareness to see that he had a man up ahead and Brown breaking out. Wasn't really seeing that he had a man, it's just being aware that the man would be breaking out and looking up to find him and getting that pass through. Nice play to tie things up by Nick Grasby and of course Aaron Brown with the finish. Wasson and Atwood. This time it's Josh Wasson looking up at the official. Usually that's Mikey Atwood's trick. Wasson breaking down, pass over, gets it back. Just bobbles the, the shot. Tom Montour and him, but Wasson went through the crease. So Montour gets free reign on the ball. He's just gonna tuck it down. Now he's gonna pass it up. Looks like he was gonna run with it. Gets it to Vice coming off the bench. He's watched by Shul behind the back and Van Every comes out to Atwood who shoots it from the outside. Knocked down, goes right to Vice. Vice fires from the outside, that one goes wide. Shul tries to get it, Vice wraps around him. We're gonna have loose ball interference as Shul didn't get a chance to catch that one before Vice kinda wrapped him around. It's gonna be Durham possession. A little pressure from the Demons. Nevin Sullivan comes back to help out. Sullivan's heading to the bench after tossing it off to John St. John. He spins, trying to get past Blue Hill. Turns back around. Bergen. Three seconds on the shot clock as they wind and fire. Stopped by Henhawk, picked up in the crease by the Demons and comes up to Tommy Montour. Montour's got Chris Atwood with him. He's gonna go up top to Travis Hill though. Throws it over to Becker. He's sliding down, gets it to Torrey Van Every. He looked a little surprised to have the ball. Got the shot off though, stopped by Murray. Van Every didn't hit his spot there. Kind of an unusual occurrence for him. He's been very accurate this year. Chrissy Atwood taking a couple of whacks from St. John. St. John strips the ball, knocks the stick right out of the hands of Atwood. Atwood's down, St. John picks it up. It's three on three, three on two. Takes the shot, stopped by Henhawk. Travis Hill comes up with it, and St. John's gonna get the ball back for the Turf Dogs as he's run over by the man coming back. It was Josh Becker, I think, flattening St. John. He's gonna take a break after some hard work. Ball comes over to O'Brien. There's a pass to the cutter. Looked like Aaron Brown may have been in the crease anyway, but he couldn't catch it. Goddard with a quick release. Caught that ball high and just pulled down as he shot. Henhawk stopped it though. Becker is gonna hit the cutter. Travis Hill, great save by Murray. And a nice job again by the Turf Dogs. The loose ball battle, they are winning all of those lately. Gamble passes it down low and O'Brien hits the cutter. Again, Armstrong can't handle that one. He definitely went through the crease before he picked it up. It's Demon's ball, 3-3. Just under four and a half to go here in the second quarter. The Demons haven't scored in the last 10 minutes and Durham really running them, putting the pressure on here in the second quarter. After the Demons started out very strong, Durham winning all the little battles lately, like that one. As they come up with the ball, Joe Wasson 
They're running three on two, but Dewey Porter makes it three on three as he hustles back. That pass can't connect with Shul, and Elijah Printup gets it. Nice pass out of his own end, but nobody's there to get it, and the Turf Dogs will get it back with a fresh 30. <laughs> Less than four to go in the second quarter. Pete Rennie gives it off to McNulty. Durham still trying to generate offensive chances, and they're getting some now. Had some trouble early, but more coming. There's a shot just stopped by the glove, by the offhand of Jake Henhawk. The bouncer by Goddard almost found the back of the net. Goddard trying to step up into the role that Jesse Guerin so competently plays for this team. Oh, hard shot off the post by Vice. He gets it back. That one's in the chest. And that one's going home. The third one's the charm as Mike Miller picks up Roger Vice's second rebound right on top of the crease. And before anybody can hit him, he tucks it home, makes it four to three. The Demons take the lead back. See Vice just roll out, hard shot off the post, comes straight back to him. Actually bounces around a bit, does get to him. And Miller, you can see a man right on him trying to get the check on, but Miller just gets it off so quickly. Now Grasby up there to face Atwood. That one rolls out. Good position by Hogarth. Atwood flattens him. Hogarth still battling for it against the man mountain that is Mike Atwood. Good job by Hogarth to battle, but it is Jameson coming up with it. There's another shot by Miller. That one bounces away from him. It looks like Durham will get to it. St. John couldn't pick it up as Wayne Van Every hustled after him. Tried to go behind the back to Grasby. Couldn't quite connect in his demon's possession. There's an outside shot by Vice. Whoa, he is ripping it tonight. That one goes off the backboard, so here comes Durham the other way. Four on three, but Vice hustles back, so it's four on four. Bergen, Brown that is, gets it over to Rennie. He makes the pass, St. John with the hard fake. Now he spins to the net, great move. Saved though by Jake Henhawk. Sidearm pass up to Chris Atwood. He's got a man ahead, passes it. But Becker can't accept the pass as Pete Rennie is all over him. They do get it to Van Every though. Wayne Van Every buries it. Gamble collided with Van Every, the battling 28s. But Van Every gets the best of that one, and it's 5 to 3 for the Oswegan Demons. Van Every having a look out back onto the floor where he's just done this. You'll see Becker coming out, keeping his eye open, and gets a nice pass. To Van Every, Brandon Armstrong couldn't quite get there. Van Every had slid in behind him, and Gamble couldn't get out there because he was still a step or two away as the pass connected. Possession or procedure by At by Mike Atwood. So Nick Grasby gets the ball for Durham with just over two to go here in the second. He'll pass it off and head to the bench. Aaron Brown heading off too for fresh legs. Goddard drives to the net, shoots. Bouncer up into the shoulder of Jake Henhawk. Nice hustle by the Turf Dogs to get off the floor and get some defenders out, except they've left one guy wide open and it hurts them. As Dewey Porter connects for the first time in the game. No mistake there. Dewey Porter with his third of the season. Very simple little play here. As Tom Montour just sees the Porters with him. Travis Hill occupying Nevin Sullivan. And Porters left all alone. Cole Murray at his mercy. It's 6-3. to three. Durham had battled so hard, taking such control of the momentum of the game to tie it up at three. And now three quick goals by the Oswegan Demons. Squire up top. Gets it back. He's going to fire that one into the belly pad of Murray. It's picked up by Shul. He's going to pass it out to Adamson. Can't control it, but there's plenty of time for him to pick it up. Three goals in a minute and 37 seconds. 27 seconds. A minute and 27 seconds for the Demons. Their quick strike offense here in the second quarter has given them a big, solid lead. But you've seen how quickly scoring can happen in this league. There's a shot by Wasson that just bounces off the foot of Henhawk. That almost found its way. That pass doesn't get through. 
It's loose behind the net, and Henhawk traps it in his crease. <clears throat> Tom Montour just looking up the floor, makes the pass over to Van Every. We know how dangerous he is, but he passes it off, gets it back, he's on his offside. Aaron Brown on him, Van Every gets it. There's Vice to Van Every. Nice job by Hogarth to get a piece of Van Every's stick, but the changeup winds up bouncing past Cole Murray. Boy, when the brakes start going against you, they can go against you big time because Hogarth with a good defensive play to get onto the stick of Van Every, it actually went up throwing Cole Murray. And Van Every bounces home his second in the last minute and a half. Here's gonna be the pass from Vice. Gets it through and you can see that Hogarth just got some of it, but Van Every puts it home. Seven to three with 30 seconds to go. Mike Atwood pulls up the face off and immediately draws a, a uh, timeout for a Sweeken. They will set up with the extra attacker. Jake Henhock making his way to the bench so they can put the sixth man out on the floor. <laughs> Currently Wayne Van Every, Elijah Printup, Roger Vice, Chris Atwood all in the offensive huddle. Looks like Tory Van Every as well. Can't see the sixth player. There you see the Durham Turf Dogs will be out. Having a word from Matt Giles. It'll be Hogarth, Gamble, Brown, Rennie, and one other. Let us know who you th think should be the three stars of the game. Tweet us, at JVI Video is the handle. Give us your input. We will look to it as we're making our selections late in the game. Roger Vice certainly playing a big role so far for the Demon. Dwayne Vandiver with two goals and an assist. Vice with a goal and two helpers. Chris Atwood with a couple of goals. On the other side of the floor, John St. John with two assists and probably the hardest working turf dog so far. Currently the edge at this point going to the Demons who lead seven to three thanks to four goals in less than two and a half minutes. They're taking their time. Now they'll start to move towards the net. Chris Atwood takes the ball. Elijah Printup's in the high, in the low slot. Just bouncing, pinballing off one player after another. Vice is gonna pass it hard to Printup. He's turned aside. Chris Atwood gets it back. Was just about to shoot, the buzzer went. And for a second it looked like he might let it go anyway. He thought better of it, as that would not have made him popular. He's already not the most popular guy with opponents. But he tucks that one away, puts the ball down, and the Demons will head to the halftime break with a lead of seven to three over the Durham Turf Dogs. I am Steven Stamp bringing you this JBI Sports Network production of Canadian Lacrosse League action. We'll be gone for about 12, 13 minutes, and we'll be back with the second half. See if the Turf Dogs can fight their way back into this one. Youth lacrosse players, come play like a pro with Junior Seelax. Want to play winter box lacrosse in the same great venues as the pros? Well, here's your chance. Seelax operates a winter box lacrosse league for kids. Divisions range from U9 to the Prospect Division, or U18. Teams are located in Barrie, Oshawa, Niagara, Six Nations, and Paris, with games being played on the same days as the pros. Be sure you get yourself registered today, as the season starts January 2015. For more information, please visit CanadianLacrosse.com and come play like a pro. St. William's Nursery is Ontario's largest native plant nursery and is committed to biodiversity conservation. We offer a large selection of high-quality trees, shrubs, grasses, wildflower, and seed, all which are grown from a source-identified wild-collected seed. Visit us on May 2nd and 3rd at our annual spring public sale. Choose from a beautiful selection of species, all at special wholesale pricing. Visit us at stwilliamsnursery.com for details.
Welcome back to the Cross Friends to the ILA. Mike Atwood once again with the faceoff wins. Got in the back of the stick. He's going to shoot just a little bit wide. Gets the rebound. Saved by Cole Murray. 7-3 for the Oswegan Demons at the half. They control the ball, but it bounces away. Here's John St. John. He's sprinting down the floor. Crosses over, passes it across to the far side. Armstrong pulls it out. They say he went through the crease this week in possession. The Turf Dogs, a little frustrated at halftime. John St. John telling, telling me, I just can't buy one. And Cole Murray saying he'd let in a few soft goals, although the uh, Demons have been getting a lot of second chance opportunities, picking up those offensive rebounds. That ball gets away. It's passed up by Shule low. To Mac O'Brien bounces away and Elijah Printup will track it down in the corner. O'Brien pressures him. Printup loses it, but it bounces harmlessly into the corner. And they'll head up the floor. Chris Atwood takes the ball. Atwood with a couple of beautiful snipes for the Oswegan Demons tonight. Gets it across to Dewey Porter, who put in a putback goal. Tommy Montour trying to get by Cody Adamson behind the back pass. Well away from everyone, but went off the backboards. Comes out to Atwood. Scott Gamble in the face of Atwood. Those two have some words. They're both drawing. They're both going to go. They're both still talking as they head over towards the box. Of course, those two went off towards the end of the first period. No penalties showing in the second quarter. That's hard to believe, but yeah, it just got through the second quarter with none, but these two get back after each other here in the third. There's a turf dog already in the penalty box. Okay, so Adamson took the first one. He'd been called for holding already. And then Gamble and Atwood head off for delay of game. And the goal by Wayne Van Every. No hesitation for Demons. They attack Roger Weiss down to Wayne Van Every. He tucks it home just inside the far post. And it's eight to three on the power play. Four on three for the Demons. There is nothing fancy here. It's just a little behind the back pass down to Van Every and he gets rid of it with a nice smooth release before the defender can get to him. Eight to three. We're now at four on four lacrosse. Grasby out there again against Atwood. Grasby actually gets the first clamp, pulls it out. And it's gonna be his teammate trapping the ball. But Brian can't come up with it. Now Mike Atwood getting into the face of Grasby. Literally as his fingers were caught up in the face mask. Grasby will settle his helmet back on his head. Head down into the offensive end. Grasby has the ball in the corner, hits the cutter. McNulty's gonna throw back to Goddard who fires it wide. Jake Henhawk maybe getting into their heads a little as they just can't seem to beat him. There's one by Cody Adamson is turned aside by Henhawk. Nice job by Tim Bergen to get that, win that loose ball away from Mike Atwood. And the Turf Dogs have another setup. John St. John fights for a pick, they score! While they were working off ball, the shot from the outside finds the back of the net from Tim Bergen. Bergen with his 10th of the season. He is a sharpshooter from the outside. And you'll see here, he's just backing away, gives the ball up, and it's actually, okay, it's not Bergen. They do make the pass to the middle. So just vacating in the area that was vacated by John St. John. And the pass comes across. It's actually St. John that gets that one. Have to see if we get another look at that one. But that makes it eight to four. We're still four on four lacrosse. Travis Hill 
Heading up the floor, he's got nobody with him, so he'll try and fight his way in. Now he leaves it there, and a goal, Tory Van Every tucks it past Cole Murray. Murray not too happy with himself on that one as he just kind of looks back and can't believe that ball found the back of the net, but Van Every with that again, over the top shot. Man, you can see Travis Hill is just gonna flip it up there for him. Van Every straight over the top, just finds a spot, not a whole lot of power behind it, just accuracy that made that one count, and it's nine to four for the Demons. We're still four on four. Wasson now to face Atwood. Can somebody beat him? Wasson pulls it out, knocks it back. Brown tracking it down. Giant Jamison all over him. Murray tries to get it, but Jamison gets it free. He's got Dewey Porter open, but Adamson takes that passing lane away so the Demons slow it down. Torrey Van Every behind the back. Gets the pass back. Van Every again behind the back. A little tap shot. Doesn't get in. Here come the Turf Dogs the other way. Cody Adamson running hard. Gets the pass back. Nobody to pass to. Who's going to peel out? They set it up at the top. John St. John. Still completing a change with the Turf Dogs with only six seconds on the shot clock. St. John passed to someone who was running away. Pete Rennie actually running off to take Chris Atwood who was breaking up the floor. Here's Tory Van Every digging in hard. Runs into St. John, throws it back up top to Montour. Vice throws it to Atwood, who's going to let it fly off a stick of Hogarth. Comes straight back out to him. A bit of a funny hop off the boards. Big save by Cole Murray. As Atwood got the ball across to Josh Becker. Becker couldn't find the back of the net. Kenny Aaron can't pick the ball up. It's going to go not over center as he stops and Roger Weiss hustles in to get it, but it bounces away from him. Here come three Turf Dogs. Tom Montour hustling back to take away the passing lane. So the Turf Dogs will get some changes. Bergen misses the net. That one looked like it did get up into the match, but I guess it... Battle for the loose ball. Weiss can't handle it. Lawson tries to track down his man, but Becker runs away from him. He's got Montour with him. He's got Atwood down low. Becker, sidearm shot, misses wide. That's over and back. Turf Dogs tracking it down. Gamble's going to get the ball. He's got O'Brien out front. Can't handle the, the ball. Gets it now. Hits the trailer. Shot. Oh, just off the arm of Jake Hendhawk. Here comes Atwood the other way. Shot by Becker. That one's turned aside by Murray. Josh Becker, just not able to find the back of the net the way he'd like to this season. There's a sub shot. You're gonna say it's off of Cole Murray. Demon's possession. Atwood with the ball, Rennie directs traffic up towards him. Gamble passes it off, so Rennie covers Montour. Van Every gets the ball. Wayne Van Every with the pass across to, At to Montour. That pass is wayward. They've got 12 to shoot as Vice tracks it down. Oh, they hit the cutter right on the front, Van Every. A little reverse shot, but it flicks wide. Long outlet, Dylan Goddard's gonna try and drive to the net. Goddard with the pass to the cutter. St. John bounces one that doesn't get to the net. Gets over to Aaron Brown. He throws it to Grasby, that's too far for him. He's hit just as he's trying to catch the ball by Van Every. And he's going to hit Van Every in the back there. <laughs> For a second, the official was indicating Turf Dog's ball. The Suikin looked aghast, and he changed direction, realizing it was the, uh, the he was pointing the wrong way. Marty Hill picks up that loose ball. Penalty coming to the Turf Dogs. Jake Hendhawk making the long run to the bench for the extra attacker. They've got 18 on the shot clock, so lots of time to set up on the six on five, trying to extend this nine to four lead. Tom Montour, hard pass across, quick release by Dewey Porter. It's caught by Goddard off the backboards. We're gonna have a slashing call. We're gonna take another quick look at Durham's last goal by John St. John. 
And it's actually Dylan Goddard. I was wondering, I thought John St. John was clearing space. That definitely was Dylan Goddard putting that in, not John St. John. And here is the big hit as Grasby tries to catch the ball. He's drilled by Wayne Van Every. He'll start with the ball on the possession. Nine to four. As Gamble is headed off to serve his penalty. Atwood across behind the back. Van Every stopped. Tori Van Every loves that behind the shoulder shot. Murray with the outlet pass. Here comes Nevin Sullivan. Mac O'Brien's up ahead trying to clear some space for him. O'Brien letting Sullivan go to the net. Sullivan not realizing he was going over and back. Runs over the restraining line. It's O'Sweek in possession. In Sealax, you have to advance the ball. You have 10 seconds to get over the center line. Five to get it past the next restraining line. And then you have to stay within that restraining line. Sullivan just ran back out, forgetting about that rule. Roger Weiss with the ball up top. Hard pass. Bounced off the boards to Hill. Goes up to Weiss. 10 seconds to shoot. He makes the hard pass to Atwood. His shot doesn't get through. Oh, he tucks a shot around Brandon Armstrong, but Cole Murray gets it. Ball pops out of the crease, but Armstrong gets it. Atwood tries the wrap check. Swims past Blue Hill. Man, way down the floor, Aaron Brown. It just gets away from him. He's got it. Hogarth with him. Passes it across. Hogarth's flattened by Travis Hill. The ball bounces free. Brown going after it. He's got body position on Blue Hill. Now here comes some help. Hogarth up top. Shot off. Nice pass by Brown, nice catch by Hogarth. He just couldn't bury. It's been the story of the Turf Dogs night so far. And Matt Giles isn't even looking at the play now. He is just busy yelling at the referees. He wants a check from a uh, cross check in the back. Hogarth working hard, going to the net. Nice play, shoots low. Stick of Jake Henhawk just swallows it up. And Hogarth immediately starts checking him. Six seconds left on the Durham penalty. Scott Campbell will come back on the floor as this weekend sets up in the offensive zone. Driving to the net. Nice save by Murray on this weekend demons Mike Miller. He loses his goalie glove, so let's wait for him to get it back on. Joe Wasson battling with Miller. Sets a big pick to spring Adamson up the floor. He throws it behind him. They've got to get it across the line. Just do it with a second to spare. And Bergen takes the ball up in the offensive zone. Goddard with it. No Jesse Gearin has really resulted in not a lot of offensive chances for the Turf Dogs in the first and third quarters. There's a goal though by Tim Bergen as they move it in nicely. They did in the second, certainly produce some scoring chances. And here they take advantage of one in the third. It's nine to five, which we can still leads Durham. Show them resiliency. Here's the cut to the net by Thomas Hogarth. Gets away from Travis Hill. Finds a lane. Sees Blue Hill coming. Dives in. And here's the goal. Nice cut by Tim Bergen. And even with Mike Miller on him, Goddard gets it to him. Bergen goes around the back and buries it. We are going to take the officials' time out with six minutes to play here in the third quarter. Let's take a quick break if we can, and come right back to Canadian Lacrosse League action on JVI Sports ne Network. I'm Stephen Stamp with the call tonight, and we'll be right back.
kicking off again our thanks again to Roland Systems Group for providing us some of our gear here that allows us to bring you these games. Atwood protecting the ball from Hogarth who was working hard to try and get it. McNulty goes after it, but the rolled pass gets to Squire. Eventually makes its way to Montour. Montour backing away. Becker passes it over. They get it to Montour, tucks it home. Great catch and release by Tom Montour to find a spot over the shoulder of Cole Murray. Nice pass from the corner by Kyle Jamison it looks like. We'll check on the replay if that was Jamison firing it out to him. Great movement of the ball by the Demons and they take advantage. Here we go. Montour moves the ball across, it's Becker and it is down to Kyle Jamison who connects with Tommy Montour. Montour catches the ball and releases it from about the same spot. Barely moves his stick just enough to direct it home. 10 to five, the Demons doubling up Durham. Durham will get the ball, Aaron Brown. Big hit from Kenny Aaron, knocks it loose. Aaron's chin strap is undone. And it's gonna be Durham possession. Brown sprinting up the floor, he's got a goal tonight. Makes the pass across, Tim Bergen backs into the corner to allow the change to complete. McNulty back to Bergen. They set up high. Goddard surveys the floor. Gets a pick for McNulty, a slip pick. Adamson to Bergen. They've got five to shoot. And he'll just roll it into the corner and then be the first one heading to the bench. We have a penalty coming to the Oswegan Demons. It's gonna be a cross check. <laughs> Tory Van Every looked like he was gonna walk right past the box and the last second turns to head in. Dylan Goddard will set up. John St. John takes the pass up top to Goddard. Goddard with a goal and an assist so far. One just needs to be correct as it was attributed to John St. John, but definitely was Goddard getting it. Here comes Bergen over to St. John. Oh, what a shot. Jeff McNulty goes sub shot, tucks it past the foot of Jake Henhawk. They take advantage of the power play about 30 seconds in to make it 10 to six. The Turf Dogs battling their way back into this one. They had a great second half comeback last week to win. They're looking to do the same thing today. Here you're gonna see that McNulty will take this pass from Bergen. John St. John opens some space by running across, a little pick, and McNulty fires just inside the post. Ball still loose, it's eventually Mike Miller coming up with it. Bergen and Schul getting the assist on McNulty's goal. It's Tommy Montour being watched by Schul. Behind the back shot by Dewey Porter. That one bounces off the boards. Straight out to Mike Miller who buries it. Seems like every time the Turf Dogs start to make, some, make up some ground, something like that happens. Just the way the bounce is going for them tonight. This weekend though, very alert to balls coming off the goaltender off the backboard. And this time, it's gonna be Porter's hard shot off the back. He's gonna take it behind the back here, way high off the backboards. Everyone's picked up by the turf dogs except for Mike Miller. You can see the man coming across hard to try and get him. It's just a step and a half too late. Miller goes low to bury his second of the game. Both of them rebounds that he has tucked away. Very different ones. The other was right on top of the crease that bounced off of Murray. This one goes off the backboards and out to him in the high slot. Same result though, they're both goals. It's 11 to six this weekend. St. John loses the ball on a check from Marty Hill. Tom Montour is breaking out, Hill has the pass. He's looking to Montour, gets it to him now. He's coming in on Grasby, shoots, shoulder save. We're gonna take the official's timeout. 
They blew the play down immediately. It looks like Jake Henhawk is saying he needs some tape for his equipment. So they're gonna blow, blow play down and take a break to get him taped up. A little confusion amongst the players. They didn't know what the stoppage was for, but it is an equipment issue. The toe cap is loose for Jake Henhawk. He'll have it taped back on. Let us know who you should think who you think should be the three stars of the game. Certainly some strong candidates, primarily on the Sweden Demon side as they lead 11 to 6. Roger Weiss has been instrumental. He's got a goal and three assists. Wayne Van Every with three goals and one assist. Tommy Montour with a goal and three helpers as well. Chris Atwood with two goals and an assist. Jake Henlock has just been big for the Oswegan Demons back in his own end. If you're looking for some curve guys. Goddard with a goal and an assist. And John St. John. He's got a, a couple of assists in the uh, Durham cause. They're trying to get back into this one. See if they can get a bit of a run going. <laughs> Goddard fighting off the check from Jamison. Spins back, pick and roll. McNulty shoots, scores. That'll help. Run a perfect pick and roll play. It's funny, the uh, Turf Dogs have been caught a few times with all their offensive players staying in the offensive zone, staying in the offensive set late in the shot clocks and giving up breaks. And here, Brandon Armstrong, as this is happening, as Dylan Goddard will get the pass to McNulty, Brandon Armstrong was breaking back to take away the breakaway chance. You do the little things, and it leads to goals. Don't know how Brandon Armstrong breaking the other way, but it just seems to work out that way, that if you do the little things right, you're rewarded. 11 to seven, Durham trying to creep back in. And the last time Durham scored, 27 seconds later, Mike Miller replied for Oswegan. So we'll see if the Turf Dogs can hold on to it this time. Is when Bergen scored before that, Tom Montour replied 20 seconds later. And just like that, they do it again. Chris Atwood with his third of the game in just about the same spot as one of his earlier goals was, just over that left shoulder. He tucks it home. Wow. Mike Atwood. Or Chris Atwood taking the perfect pass. He's got a defender on him, but just has enough space. Takes the pass right where he needs it and tucks it home. Such a talented young player. Making it 12 to seven. For the Turf Dogs, they've just got to not be discouraged and go back and try to get the next goal once again and then see if they can hold it off. Oswegan doing a fantastic job of responding every time Durham has done something here in the third quarter. That pass gets away from Atwood, takes a quick look, sees he's got time and goes to get the ball. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Sub shot by Atwood. It's gonna roll out and be picked up by Travis Hill. Hill to Torrey Van Every low, but Vice picks it up. Dewey Porter gets the pass after his pick. Shot to the chest pad of, Murray, of Cole Murray. Hogarth running up the floor, gives it to St. John, cut her off the bench, they get it to him. Great play, great goal. Durham Turf Dogs have done it. Again, they have taken the first goal to try and creep back into it. This is the man off the bench, hustling in, taking the pass, Brandon Armstrong. Talk about being rewarded for doing the little things right. Last time he was the guy breaking back down the floor to make sure there wasn't a transition here the other way, and they scored. Here's the play again by Atwood. Oh, that's a nice little pass. No big moving on the pass, just gets it across. And here's St. John with a beautiful pass as well to Armstrong cutting across diagonally. It's 12 to eight. Can the Demons do it yet again? They've done it every time it's happened here in the third quarter. Remarkable, really. Goddard scores with 12.56 to go, 28 seconds later. They come back, here's another shot by Durham. You know, Goddard scores, Torrey Van Ever responds 28 seconds later. Bergen scores, Montour responds 20 seconds later. McNulty scores, Mike Miller responds 27 seconds later. McNulty scores again, Atwood responds. 
26 or 16 seconds later. And here they try again. That shot just misses from Ken Aaron. Durham can't quite pick the ball up. Montour gets it, only five seconds to shoot. He tosses his ball and his stick out. Elijah Printup picks it up, gets the shot off, stopped by Murray. Montour goes and picks up his stick. Somehow Blue Hill holding on to the ball. Now it pops out and Aaron Brown has it. He reverses field a couple of times. They get a fresh 30. A bit late after the change, but they take it. And Pete Rennie runs up the floor with Blue Hill in pursuit. Tosses it back to Bergman, it's knocked away. Roger Weiss goes after it. He gets it, sees the man up the floor, Montour on a breakaway. Murray steps out, Montour shoots off the post. That could be a big one. As we move into the final 40 seconds here of the third quarter, the Turf Dogs need the next goal. They need to stop that streak of four straight times where they have scored and the Demons have responded with a goal. They get it on the crease, St. John's turned aside. Rebound scores! Joe Wasson tucks it home. They have broken that streak of responses by the Demons, and Durham pulls within three at 12 to nine with 24 seconds to go. Nice little pass on top of the crease by John St. John. Here it is, turning from one end to the other as Montour's shot off the post, comes up the floor. Stepping back and making the pass right onto the crease. St. John's shot bounces back. It's picked up by Wasson, he tucks it home. Here comes Sullivan the other way. Grasby with a shot, saved by Henhawk. Durham with all kinds of pressure on the Demons here, but the Demons Try and break back up the other way. They throw it all the way down the floor. The pass to the trailer Atwood. He hits the cutter behind the back by Vice's wide. Just gets past Dewey Porter and Sullivan will get it. The quarter ends. It's 12 to nine. What an exciting period of lacrosse here at the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. We've got some action behind the play. It's Chris Atwood in the middle of it again. This time it's Eric Schul having words with him. Atwood, who missed last week's game with the flu, still struggling with it a bit, but he has three goals and an assist. It is 12 to nine after 45 minutes of play. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. Stay with us, this one is far from over. I'm Steven Stamp for TVI Sports Network in the Canadian Lacrosse League. identified the gap between education and the stressors of the working world. We developed customized programs for each student at an affordable cost. Students can choose from over 30 diploma and certificate programs offered at any of Academy of Learning College's 17 Ontario-based locations. Simply a better way to learn. Learn more at academyoflearning.com. Fire Monitoring of Canada is the leader in the fire alarm monitoring industry specializing in the early notification of fire alarm signals to the fire department. Our experienced customer service staff will work closely with you to develop the best solution for your specific monitoring needs and our CFAA certified technicians are qualified to perform your installation quickly and efficiently. Be sure to choose Fire Monitoring of Canada because saving time saves lives. Visit us at fire-monitoring.com. All right, welcome back to the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. Three stars of the game, who should they be? Let us know. Tweet us, at JVI Video is the handle. Right now for Durham, certainly John St. John with four assists. Very strong candidate, Dylan Goddard with a couple of goals and an assist. Here's the little fracas at the end of the third quarter. 
we let you know a hat trick and an assist each for Chris Atwood and Wayne Van Emery. And there's Chris Atwood right there, mixing up with Eric Schul. Yet another player in Eric Schul who crossed off the Chris Atwood Christmas card list and vice versa. He is a man who gets under opponent's skin, Chris Atwood. Both those players, Atwood and Schul, off in the penalty box as we begin the fourth quarter. It's 12 to nine. Can Durham maintain the momentum they got by scoring their second straight goal? Joe Watson with 24 seconds to play in the period. Kyle Jamison tracks it down, but he went through the crease. It'll be Durham possession. We're four on four here in the fourth quarter. Grasby bounces it to the man coming off the bench, Dylan Goddard. Bergen's gonna take his time as they head down into the offensive zone. St. John spins. Tries to Adamson, couldn't get it there. Lob pass ahead for Montour. He runs away from St. John, catches the ball, shoots, scores! What a shot by Tom Montour. Cole Murray drops his stick and glove, fluffs the net to let the refs get the ball out. That is a great catch and shoot by Tom Montour. Not in the usual catch and shoot quickly sense. This time it's a great catch followed by the terrific shot just going low and tucking it past Cole Murray. Here it is. Kyle Jamison, I think it was, that threw this pass ahead. Monter, you can see the ball kind of spinning back. It had some backspin. You have to reach back behind him. An athletic little play by Tom Monter to get that ball. And it's 13 to nine for Oswekin. A couple of goals now for Montour, three assists. He is such a difference maker for this club. Nevin Sullivan with the ball. He's watched by Marty Hill, so he gives it back to Nick Grasby. McNulty up top. There's a shot by McNulty, it goes off a defender. There's a shot by Adamson. Ball is loose, it's picked up by the Demons. Turns out it was Ken Aaron. Thanks to our producer, our director, Alex Frazzo, for that tidbit. The Kenny Aaron threw the beautiful pass up ahead that sprung Tom Montour. Now Tory Van Every takes a pass from Elijah Printup. He kicks the ball over to Dewey Porter. He raises the stick high to get the ball free. Goes over to Printup. Blue Hill tries to set a pick for him. Comes to Tory Van Every. Five to shoot. He goes over the top, misses the net. It's gonna be scooped up by Sullivan. He turns back towards his own end. Would have had a player breaking, but there were a couple of demons back to take away the, the uh, transition chance. But Aaron Brown gets the ball with print up on him. Print up such good footwork to maintain position on Brown there as he is so wont to do, keeping his feet matched up and just staying in perfect position. Ball comes out to Aaron Brown. His hot shot. Bounces, oh, the goal! Mac O'Brien had the shot released before it even looked like it had gotten into his stick. That is a quick release by Mac O'Brien. It's 13 to 10. The Turf Dogs are not going away. They came down here to try and earn a home playoff game. And they're still working at it. There's Aaron Brown with the, the initial shot. It bounces out and O'Brien picks it up at knee height and just gets the stick up and over Henhock to tuck it over his shoulder and into the net. Such quick hands by Mac O'Brien. Becker looked up before he had the ball, so Joe Watson's able to scoop the ball that rolled away from Becker's stick. <laughs> Aaron Brown, who's a very, very steady defensive player and tough customer in his own end for the Turf Dogs, with some points tonight, a goal on the breakaway and adding an assist. Travis Hill gets the ball behind his net, lobs it up ahead to Becker. Hogarth hustling back to take away the break. Chance for Montour. Got to keep an eye on him. Becker now driving to the net. Adamson takes him. Comes across to Montour, and now he fires. Murray with the shrug save, looking for the outlet. Nothing there. He's going to step out of his crease. They've got four seconds to get across the center line. Grasby's going to rip the ball down into the far end. Nobody was open, so he had to just toss it down the floor. Wasson tries to track down his man but Mike Miller takes his time getting it back. Miller would give it to the late man, Mike Atwood coming up into the offensive zone. Gives it to his brother, Chris. Over to Becker. 
Vice in the corner. Miller throws it out. There's a shot by Mike Atwood, goes wide. Becker behind the back, saved by Murray. Nice alert play. Becker got plenty on that one. Bergen's on him. Becker circling. Tries to get the uh, pass off. Can't get it to Miller. Now he does. That's Roger Weiss, actually. Ball bounces away. It's Becker going after it. Chris Atwood comes up with it. Print up's the high man. Atwood with Watson on him. Pick from print up. Roll. Shot. Saved by Murray. Pete Rennie calmly takes that one in the crease. Comes out. Runs between a couple of demons. Takes a shot from another one. It's Cody Adamson. Let's give credit where it's due. Tough, tough play. Brown bounces that one wide. It's tracked down by St. John. 15 seconds for the Turf Dogs to get a shot off. St. John rolls it up high to Nevin Sullivan. Takes a whack from Kenny Aaron. A couple of reactions to that. It was a stick on stick that made it so loud though. That pass doesn't get through from Brown to Wasson. Sweden gets it. Timing a little treacherous for Blue Hills. He took a cross check just as he caught that, but he holds on to the ball. Joe Wasson trying to get it free. There's Tory Wasson high slot, and he is sandwiched. Ball pops free, He's still fighting for it, and Porter gets it, eight to shoot for the Demons. Ball off the boards. Hard work along the defensive side by Joe Wasson, and eventually the Turf Dogs get it back. Scott Gamble runs to his side while he waits for somebody to come out in the offensive end. Hogarth takes it down in the corner to McNulty and goes towards the net. The late man in his Bergen comes to Grasby. Little late, oh, what a pass, what a goal! Great pass by McNulty, he had to reach up to get the pass, controlled it, fires it to Hogarth, cutting in the net, and the big man tucks it between the feet of Jake Henhock, it's 13-11. Durham keeps creeping into this one. Here's the pass from Grasby across. And McNulty had to go up and get. And Hogarth catches it on top of the slide, going across to the far side, but finds the hole. Durham's within two. Bit of a delay while the officials talk to the people in the scorer's booth. Now we're ready to go. It's Grasby up there against Atwood. The Turf Dogs on a four to one run. Grasby battling hard for the faceoff. He's been doing a good job clamping and he gets, no, he gives up possession. On the infraction, it's gonna to be Tom Montour with the ball first weekend. Montour with a five point night. They're gonna move it over on the near side to Marty Hill. Goes up to Roger Weiss, he can shoot it from there, he does. Murray comes up with it, drops out of his gear. <coughs> Gamble with the ball behind the net, Marty Hill watching him. Campbell with nobody really open is going to run up the floor, drops it. Marty Hill staying on him. He's got three seconds to get across center and does so. Corkscrew checks by Hill. Can't get the ball loose. Gamble not really comfortable holding the ball this long. Looking for someone to pass to. Nobody getting open. Finally out to McNulty with 10 to shoot on the clock. Josh Wasson. He's going to swim move. Pass it across. Late in the shot clock. John St. John tries to get it off. Can't get it through. Roger Weiss playing defense, and it's gonna be a shot clock foul by the Turf Dogs. Here comes Chris Atwood with the pass up. He'll head to the bench, and Ken Aaron will head up into the offensive end. Just over eight minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. This has turned into a terrific lacrosse game between the Durham Turf Dogs and the Sweeken Demons tied for third place in Sealax, but both looking to secure a home playoff game Either of them can do it with a couple of wins in their last two games. That means winning this one. Fresh 30, the ball's loose. It's grabbed by Travis Hill. Pete Rennie going hard after it. Rennie having a strong game for the Turf Dogs. Pass across to Jamison. He's watched by O'Brien. There's the pass from the outside. Gets back up top to Travis Hill. They've got 10 seconds to shoot as Hill gets it back. 
Goes to Jamison, he's isolated. Elijah Printup is heading all the way back to the bench with five seconds to shoot. We are just inside the seven and a half minute mark, the midway point of the fourth quarter. So we will go to the officials timeout. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with the final stretch of this exciting CLAX game on KBI Sports Network. I'm Stephen Stamp. I'll be right back with you in about a minute and a half. Prospect. You see the standings there, as we mentioned earlier, Durham and Oswegan, both three and three. Both one game left after tonight. There's a shot by Dylan Goddard, turned aside by Jake Henhock. And Goddard just ran the length of the floor after the restart, and nobody touched him, so he took a shot. Great chance for the Turf Dogs, turned aside. Ball loose, Bergen gets it back. He's gonna drive to the net. Henhock was all over that shot. Here comes Montour the other way. Last chance in the next few minutes to tell us who you think should be the three stars. Tom Montour has to be considered. Two goals and three assists, some big plays for the, for the Demons. Let us know at JVI Video who you think they should be. Brandon Armstrong with behind the back pass up to St. John St. John who's a candidate for the three stars. There's a pass, a shot, just turned aside from McNulty. St. John, duck, drive. Travis Hill gets him back. Nice play by Hill, but the pass to McNulty shot comes right back to him. Bounces out to Bergen. He steps away, and they're going to set things up and take their time. They've got a fresh 30. Turf Dogs, a lot of pressure on a 4-1 to one run, as we mentioned. Since the last couple minutes of the third quarter, Henhock with the save. Looks up the floor, nothing there, so he smartly just gives it off to Chris Atwood. He goes to Tom Monter, a hard pass across the body to print up. We've got a 10 second count. The Demons turn it over. Just a little too methodical coming up the floor. And Durham will keep some pressure on. Grasby heads off the, to the bench. Oh, and they just, Joe Watson trying to shovel it to his brother Josh. Just too far and it's an over and back. Sloppy possessions by both teams. Give it back to the Demons. Atwood takes the pass in the slot. He's sandwiched, loses the ball. It bounces away from Murray. <laughs> Demons possession as Joe Wasson gave a loose ball push. Comes all the way back up to Marty Hill. Chris Hatwood slowing things down a little. 20 to shoot, no rush for the Demons. They want to create good scoring chances late in the shot clock. There's a shot, shot turned aside by Murray. O'Brien running out of traffic. He makes the hard pass up to Aaron Brown. Brown to Goddard, shoots off the post or Henhock. Either way, I think it was the post because it came off hard. Goes up into the mesh. And it's going to be Durham possession. Goddard in the corner. Looked for a second at Hogarth, but he had demons all around him, so he'll pass up to Wasson. Back to Goddard, and they'll set it up. There's a cutter McNulty, picked off by Jamison. Looks up the floor, nothing there. Gives it to the short man, Marty Hill. He'll hit the man coming off the bench in Roger Weiss, who passes over to Wayne Van Every. Five minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Still a two-goal lead by Oswegan. The momentum with the Turf Dogs, but Oswegan, we can, we've seen, can be very dangerous, can strike in an instant. Oh, what a play by Pete Rennie to jump over the defender on the floor and come up with the ball. Gets it off to his man, and they get it across the center line. Here's John St. John faking the pass with Blue Hill on him. Here comes Tom Montour to help out. He drives to the net. Turf Dogs need to get some helpers. They try to hit the cutter. 
Grasby gets it off one hop, 10 seconds to shoot. Now, Durham finally gets five guys on the floor. One of them's gonna stay back because they've only got four seconds to shoot. They come in close, shot, and again, St. John turned aside. He has been snake bit today, all kinds of chances. Still cannot find the back of the net. He hustles to the bench as Durham sets up, coming into the final four minutes of play. This game can't tick away quick enough for the Demons. They're gonna shoot from the outside. Atwood can't get it through, bounces over his stick on the bound off the boards, and Eric Schul heads up the floor. Schul's got some help coming from the bench. Pass tipped away by Travis Hill, but Schul gets to it, scooped up by Henhock. Here come the Demons. Jameson reaches over the center line. He had plenty of time, but wanted to make sure. Dewey Porter throws it to the far side. He'll slow it down. Rip Montour gets the pass into Van Every. Tori Van Every's shot goes wide. It's going to be picked up, thrown behind his back, down along the boards by Montour. Here comes Porter with three to shoot. It bounces away from him. Bounces away again in Sturm possession after the 30 violation. Scott Gamble will start with some pressure from Porter, but he's got Brown as an outlet, uses him. Here comes Brown up the floor. Durham, oh, what a pass by St. John. The shot off the top of the crossbar. A big hit. Here we go, coming into the final three minutes. Durham setting up with possession. There's a shot from the outside by Wasson. He can't quite connect. Here come the Demons up into the offensive zone. Wayne Van Every gives it up to Tom Montour. Montour passes off to Van Every again. Two and a half minutes to go. Sub shot by Van Every goes wide. It's gonna come back out near center. O'Brien picks it up. Marty Hill right on him. O'Brien tries to run by him, just holds on to the ball, spins, three demons around him. He's looking for some help. One hopper to Bergen. He gets the pass down low to McNulty on his offside. Back over to Bergen. Hogarth comes to help out. Roger Weiss in there playing D, Goddard with the ball. Cutter misses, but Bergen gets it, shoots just wide. Three to get it on the net, McNulty's gonna fire. Just rolls it actually as he realized he couldn't get the ball through. 147 to go. Two goal lead still for the Demons. Lots of pressure from the Turf Dogs. No quit in them, but the Demons holding on so far. <laughs> Jake Hanhawk with a couple of big saves to help them hang on to this 13-11 advantage. There's the pass through. Doesn't quite connect. Ball's down on the floor, everyone battling for it with just a couple seconds on the shot clock. Oh, and a big kerfuffle over along the boards. The Demons player running over, Turf Dog still on top of him, can't quite see who it is. Tom Montour on top of Scott Gamble. They're having words for each other. Both of these guys, Gamble's been fired up all night, getting in the face of Chris Atwood, among others, and Montour is just kind of perpetually fired up. He's gonna head to the box. At this point, it looks like just Montour taking the penalty. So the Turf Dogs will go to the power play with 1.17 to go, they need to get one. Get the ball back. They won't have to pull the goalie. <coughs> Travis Hill having some words for the officials. Durham's gonna take their time out to have a little more of a chance to talk things over. We've got a couple of righties, Wasson and Bergen on the floor. Goddard, St. John, actually Grasby's out there in the huddle as well. There are six turf dogs in their huddle. There's Roger Chrysler talking to his defenders. You see Frink up and Jameson, they'll be at the top. There's the standings once again. 
reminder that whoever wins this game between Durham and Oswegan gets a fourth win, moves into a tie with Barry and Southwest. Barry does play this Sunday against the Niagara Lock Monsters in Barry. Make sure you check that game out on JBI Sports Network at two o'clock. And then next weekend, we'll have the two final games of the season. One from Paris, Ontario, the Southwest Cyclops will be taking on these Durham Turf Dogs. And then Sunday, the 15th, the final game of the season, the Demons head to Barry to face the Blizzard. All of these games with huge playoff implications at this point. So we'll be the two righties, Bergen and Wasson, along with the lefties, Goddard, McNulty with the ball, and St. John out there on the floor for Durham. As we said, Jamison and Printup up top for the Demons. That shot's deflected, bounces off the official. Nice work by Wasson to get it and get a second chance for the Turf Dogs. Shot from the outside by Goddard, skips right again, comes back over center. Dylan Goddard's had three or four of those shots tonight from that spot. They have all gone wide, and most of them have bounced back over center. Wayne Van Everu will treat a little bit into his own end. They're going to pressure him. Long pass into the corner. Turf Dogs hustling after them. Ken Aaron goes hard after. Tory Van Everu gets it, comes out. He's got Turf Dogs all over him, three of them, four of them around him. He holds on to it, goes by the boards, flicks it back. It comes to Wayne Van Everu. <laughs> He shoots the save by Murray. Murray gets it. Turf Dogs rushing to the bench to get a man off the bench at the other end. Here comes Goddard, breakaway. Save by Jake Henhock. What a huge save by Henhock as Goddard was sprung all alone. The pass by Aaron gets away from, Tory, from Wayne Van Every and the Turf Dogs get it back. 15 seconds, they're down by two. They need to get one quickly. Bergen to Goddard, to Bergen. He's got to shoot, he does. Save by the shoulder cap of Jake Henhock, 7.6 to go, 13-11, Oswegan, and the Demons are taking a timeout. Referee John Watson calls, blows play dead, as the Demons, before ball, the ball could be put back into play, it was gonna be Durham possession, but it was a dead ball, so they get to take the timeout, and they will talk things over. What an exciting finish to this game. I am just going to get a quick drink of water as I've been getting pretty excited here. There's the offensive huddle for the Durham Turf Dogs. Matt Giles going over what he wants. <laughs> There's the defensive unit. Again, it is only four defenders for the Demons. Print up and Jamison up top. Travis Hill down low. Joined by Rod Squire. McNulty to Bergen. He's got to let it rip. Does off a body in front. That'll just about do it. The ball bounces away. Bergen has it. He's tracked down by Print up. To give each other a last little shove as the buzzer goes. The Oswegan Demons hold on for a 13 to 11 win over the Durham Turf Dogs and strongly improve the chances that they will be back here again this season to play a playoff game here at the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. The Durham Turf Dogs scoring five of the last seven goals to battle back into this game, but it was that stretch where they scored four times in the third quarter and each time the Demons responded with a goal within 30 seconds to get back into it. We're gonna do our three stars of the evening. Lots of options for who they could be. Wayne Van Every with three goals and one assist. One of them and he makes it onto the, uh, onto the list. Strong game from Van Every. good ball possession game as well. Our second star, just a hustle night from John St. John of the Durham Turf Dogs. He winds up, he's credited right now with a goal that should get corrected as it was Goddard's goal, but he's gonna have either four or five assists on the evening. And he was just working hard all over the floor. 
and he could not believe, I'm sure, that he could not put a ball into the net. Would have made a big difference, but he worked hard, lots of assists, and a great effort by John St. John. And our first star of the game, again, very lots of candidates. We're gonna go with a two goal, three assist night from Tom Montour. I almost changed that one up when he took the penalty with 117 to go, giving the uh, term Turf Dogs a chance to battle back into it, but a stellar night once again for Tom Monter. Makes a difference every time he is on the floor for these Oswegian Demons. We got a late tweet. Somebody wanting Pete Rennie as one of the three stars of the game. I'm with you that he was a candidate for that. As he did a pretty nice job tonight defensively for the Durham Turf Dogs. Really steady for them. And uh, I'd say Aaron Brown, another candidate for them as well, as he put in his usual rock solid defensive effort, added a goal and an assist, so nice work by him. Mac O'Brien with a couple goals and an assist before Durham also had a strong game, as did Tim Bergen, a goal and three assists, and Dylan Goddard doing such a nice job. He will be credited with the goal eventually, he's not right now, but also had a couple of assists. And uh, McNulty with two and two, so lots of guys have played well, but this weekend doing enough to get the win here. And uh, their other candidates, Roger Weiss had a goal and three assists. And as usual, such a big role for their team. Mike Miller with a couple goals and an assist. Kenny Aaron had a strong game both ways. He had three assists and playing as usual, mostly defensively, but a nice transition effort for him from him. And Chris Atwood, of course, with the hat trick and an assist. They're setting up the tables for autograph night down on the floor. The fans will make their way around onto the turf and the Demons will return to the floor to sign them. You want your event webcast? Let us know at JVI Sports Network, at JVI Video, jvisportsnetwork.com on the web. Let us know what you would like us to do. I'm Steven Stamp. I would be happy to come and do your event for you and uh, maybe with some other guys. And the crew would be there as well. Our producer, Gary Morrison, our director, Alex Frazzle, and the rest of the gang here at JVI Sports Network Thank you for being with us for this exciting Canadian Lacrosse League action. We'll see you Sunday, 2 p.m. Be there.